Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For this video, this is going to be a get ready with me vlog as I get ready to prepare for my trip to Jamaica. So when I recorded my Aruba vlog, someone asked me if I would be willing to share like my entire process of like how I get myself ready for a trip, like getting my hair done, packing, shopping, all of that good stuff. So I figured, why not? So I got my hair um, in box braids at the end of July, specifically for Aruba, and they've been in for the past three months. So it's the end of October, and my hair is finally set free. As you guys can see, I have my full afro out. We got a lot of new growth. Um, that is the longest that I've kept box braids in. I normally don't keep them in past two months, but I had so many trips that came back to back to back. Like I had Aruba, then I had Minneapolis, and then I had Dallas. So it was easier for me to just keep them in. But they are out and my hair is out. I was up all night <laughs> taking these out. Here's all the hair from it. I started at 10.30 last night. I didn't finish until six o'clock this morning. I took a two hour nap and now I'm headed to my stylist so that she can wash, blow dry, steam, treat me, give me whatever treatment I need, give me a trim. And then I'm actually gonna get it right, braided right back up um, because I'm headed to Jamaica in about a week. So let's go. Than way longer than I thought. Alright, you guys. So as I said, I kept these box braids in for a very long time. I typically don't keep them in longer than two months, maybe a month and a half. But again, I had a lot of trips back to back, so I ended up keeping them in longer. So as a result, there is a lot of buildup in my hair, a lot of gunk from all of the oils and the different moisturizers that I use. And I'm somebody, like when I have box braids, I still take really good care of my hair. Like I still wash them and oil them and I cleanse my scalp. But three months is a long time for me to have those braids in my hair. I have learned the hard way in the past that the synthetic hair in the braiding hair dries out my hair so it's really important for me to kind of over moisturize my hair so what Ashley is doing is she's starting out with cleansing my scalp really good with an astringent and then she's actually going to shampoo my hair not once not twice but three times in addition to deep conditioning it just to make sure that we get all of that gunk and all of that dirt out of my hair I have been in the gym I have been in the ocean so there is a lot of dirt and a lot of buildup within my hair and as you can see she's digging deep using her fingernails to get all up in my scalp and y'all that felt so good Next, she is going to steam treat my hair. So typically every two weeks when I go to her normally, I get a steam, a steam treatment anyway just because it's really moisturizing for my hair. It helps to detangle my hair easier and it makes my hair so much more softer. So every time I go, I always get a steam treatment and it has worked wonders for my hair. So now that I'm done being washed and conditioned and steamed, she is going to blow dry my hair out so that I can go get it braided. Now when I first started going to Ashley, um, my hair wasn't as thick because it was actually pretty damaged and it was going through some breakage so she didn't need to do as many sections but over the years as my hair has gotten healthier and thicker she has to blow dry my hair in like six five or six different sections at this point so as you can see she's going in with the blow dryer and the Denman brush just making sure that she blow dries out my hair and she does use a heat protectant as well to make sure that I don't get any heat damage I know some naturals or some people who are natural don't put heat to their hair at all now I have not pressed my hair out in over five to six years but I will blow dry it just because it makes it easier to manage and it also me it also gets me out of the salon 
much, much quicker. And each time that she blow dries my hair, she always puts about a pea-sized amount of shea butter in my hair to make sure that my hair is moisturized. Now, my hair does not take very well to olive oil, which is what I used to put on it. I have learned that my hair takes really, really well to shea butter, so I typically tend to use that within my hair, along with peppermint oil, jojoba oil, manoi oil, and a few others. And again, since I had those braids in for so long, your girl was overdue for a trim. So after Ashley got my hair all the way blow dried, which took between 40 minutes to maybe an hour, it took a while, <laughs> she is going to go ahead and give me a good trim. And I trust Ashley, I've been going to her for so long at this point, so I trust her with scissors. Um, it's taken me a really long time to trust people with scissors with my hair, because when I was younger, I had really thick, really pretty hair, but I always felt like the people or the stylists I went to back then would cut more hair than what was needed. But like I said, I've been going to Ashley for a while. She is a beautician, she knows what she's doing. She went ahead and gave me a trim to make sure that we get rid of some dead hair so that my hair can continue to grow. Now I was hoping that I would hit shoulder length, but I'm not there yet. I'm really, really close to it. After this trim, within the next couple of months, probably at the like the first quarter of 2024, I should hit it and I'm really excited about that because it's a hair goal that I have wanted to accomplish for a while. I'm so happy that my hair is so thick and healthy and it just feels so good. It's so soft and lustrous and now I just want to work on growing it even longer and that means low manipulation and making sure that I'm maintaining my hair health. y'all so my hair is now up in a bun um i'm so happy that my hair is so healthy by the way i have been natural for about 10 years and it's been <laughs> a little bit of a journey like and i i was a transitioning natural so i just ended up growing all of my hair out um my hair is broken off a couple of times because i didn't really know how to take care of it and um stress was a big factor then trying to figure out like what my hair actually likes what it needs because I think at one point I was putting a lot of olive oil in it, but I learned the hard way that olive oil is actually not that good for my hair. Like, my hair doesn't take well to olive oil. So I have been going to Ashley, which is my hairstylist for the past 10 years or so, and she has gotten my hair so, so healthy. Um, I can't, like, and she knows, like, I sing her praises anywhere. I send anybody and everybody to her, especially people who are natural and just want to take better care of their hair. Because I know there are a lot of stylists, I feel like, who know how to do hair, but don't necessarily specialize in keeping your hair healthy. In, in keeping your hair healthy as far as like understanding your hair type and you know your your moisture level and the best way to you know what your hair does and doesn't like as far as manipulation and different products so love her like to the end of the earth I will never stop going to her I was just joking with her while I was in there like you can never retire my hair has never ever ever been healthier and I love how Every time I go, it just keeps getting longer and longer. So I thought I was going to hit bra strap length today, but she went ahead and trimmed me out uh, or trimmed me down. So I didn't hit it just yet, but she said like early next year, I should be right around like at the tip top of bra strap length. And I've always wanted to achieve that hair goal. I've been striving for it. So well past shoulder length, which was a, a cool milestone. So now I'm, ha I'm hoping to hit bra strap length with my hair. Uh, next year and then I said I wanted to start wearing it out more because I normally always have it braided up and twisted up not that I mind but every other month or so it would be nice to get like a nice press out and you know just, just kind of wear it out a little bit more especially since it's longer and I feel like it'll be a little bit easier so I'm in my car I am headed to uh, my hair braider y'all I got a whole team of people <laughs> <laughs> for my hair like I got my stylist she you know she does my trims all my treatments and then I have a braid lady and I have a different person that I go to like whenever I get a sew-in but I haven't gotten a sew-in since like 2014 but should I ever change my mind <laughs> I have a sew-in lady too so all my black girls out there I'm pretty sure y'all can relate like especially with being loyal to hairstylists and having different people designated for different styles 
I've been going to my braid lady since I was 16 years old. She started braiding my, braiding my hair when I was a junior in high school. So I love like catching up with her and her kids are grown now. And she loves how healthy my hair is. And she was the one who did my box braids for Aruba. So I'm gonna head to the ATM because they only take cash. Um, and I didn't get a chance to go this morning because I, I didn't want to be late um, for Ashley because she had a couple of people in there. So I'm going to go to the ATM, grab the cash, and then I'm going to head over to my braid lady to um, get some... Well, I'm going to show y'all what I'm going to get. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> so let's go. All right. So my hair braider is starting off, of course, with parting my hair to make sure that all of the braids are lined up properly. And I love, love, love a good part. I'm going to be getting two rows. So she started out with parting the middle of my hair first. Doing this style from start to finish took about five hours, give or take, just because of how thick my hair is. And of course, going to the braid shop is a whole day thing so i did order some food while i was there the girl who was braiding my hair was so nice she made sure not to braid it too tight so that i wouldn't have any hair loss or anything like that and i love that she braided kind of fast she made sure my braids were neat and they came out perfect all right y'all so i'm back home i got my hair braided it came out so nice I didn't get a chance to get a full picture. Well, maybe I can show you guys in the mirror real quick. Can you guys see? Let's see. Well, I don't feel like the video quality is good. Don't worry. Y'all will see it in the videos. <laughs> so I'm back home. It is about seven o'clock. So it took her about five hours to, uh, to do this. So it's two rows and it's just long and straight down. For some reason, like this right side of my temple, like right here is really tender. Um, I'm not sure why, uh, which was really weird. So I'm going to make sure that I put like my um, peppermint oil and my uh, black castor oil on it periodically just to make sure like there's no, you know, issues with tension and stuff like that. Because as she was braiding it, it just felt like really, really tender right here. Um, another thing I meant to mention is when I went to the ATM to get the money to pay the girl who braided my hair um, and shout out to Eskia Hair Braiding because that's where I went. I ended up getting the money, like the cash that I'll be spending in Jamaica. So when I go, when I travel, I like to um, travel with cash to pay for some things in cash. And then I like to put like certain things on my credit card so that I can get points. So I went ahead and got the money that I'll be spending um, in Jamaica cash wise. And, I, and for Jamaica, um, when I went in February, like I found that I was using a lot of cash for like tips and, you know, quick quick meals and stuff like that and sometimes it helps you avoid credit card fees and whatever so I went ahead and got that um now that I'm home I'm gonna go ahead and rest for a quick second and then I am going to get ready to enter in like my passport information for Southwest uh there's a uh like a form you have to fill out for Jamaica I think it's called a C5 form or something like that. Just like immigration paperwork. I always like to do it before I leave so that I'm not like scrambling last minute. And then I'll, I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade my flight so that I have early bird check-in. Now with Southwest, sometimes I'll do early bird check-in, sometimes I won't. But I felt like it, so I'm going to go ahead and bump it up so that I can, you know, get boarding class A. It doesn't matter to me anyway because I'm going to check my bag, but that just means that I can get... Um, a window seat and I can you know board a little bit quicker so I was indecisive of if I was gonna do it or not but I am so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now alrighty we are three days away from the trip and I am at my salon to get my wax so remember I told you guys in Dallas that I've had the same wax lady for the past six or seven years and she couldn't wax me for Dallas but she can wax me for Jamaica so I'm here outside the building my appointment is at 2 45 it's about 2 38 so I got here just a little bit early and I'm gonna go ahead and run up in here and get my bikini wax and then I am getting my underarms waxed as well um I used to do like Brazilian wax. I actually got a Brazilian wax for Aruba, but um, I don't know, y'all. The last time I got that Brazilian, I was like, you know, I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> like, 
like it was one it was one pool and i swear to everything i love like i almost hopped off that table i've been getting brazilians for the past like six or seven years and i'm just at a place now where it's like i just no longer think it's necessary so i'm just gonna get a, a bikini wax instead and yeah just get my underarms waxed so let's go y'all <laughs> so we are all handled all taken care of both above and below <laughs> and it felt like that bikini wax i'm gonna have to do more of those because that brazilian i don't know if anybody else has ever gotten a brazilian wax but child sometimes i just get so jittery and i get so jumpy um and like i said i've been getting them for years like six or seven years but i don't know i just feel like maybe they're just not that necessary and maybe the pain is not something i'm willing to go through normally i take an ibuprofen like two or three ibuprofen before i um before i get my waxes because like i said i get really jittery i get really jumpy it's so weird as if i haven't been getting them for as long as i've been getting them but any anyway got the armpits done got the bikini line all handled so that was the main thing that was the only thing that i'm getting done today and then tomorrow I'm running some final errands and I will be finishing packing. But for today, we can go ahead and chick chick like check that off of my list of things to do before I head down to Jamaica. Okay, so I'm back home from my wax appointment and I have a little bit of time to spare. So I'm gonna take about half an hour to 45 minutes just to go ahead and get all of my toiletries together. So like, you know, so all my skincare stuff, body care stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now since I have about an hour of free time before I have to do something. Okay, so what I used to do when I traveled is that I would buy like a ton of travel sized items or whatever just for my suitcase. But what I started to do this year instead was to use whatever I have, so my full size regular items, and I just started putting them in those little travel size containers that I got from Target. They were only about like what 50 cents, a dollar, some of them, and I'm just pouring whatever I have into those little travel size um container so my facial cleansers my toner my body lotion my oils everything just pouring them in there and the only travel size items that I buy tends to be deodorant or toothpaste at this point so as you can see I'm just pouring everything in there making sure that the caps are tight And by doing this and putting things in like, tr I guess, TSA approved travel size containers is that if I want to check my bag, I can, but if I want to carry it on the plane, I can, and I don't have to worry about, you know, liquids being over the required amount or the recommended amount or the maximum amount or whatever, because I know that these little containers are already TSA approved. And they also take up way less space in my suitcase overall.
So now that I have everything in their respective containers, I'm going to go ahead and take all of those items and put them in this pouch. Now I got this pouch from Lancome as a free gift. I just recently re-upped on all of my skincare products for the next six to eight months, which meant that I spent a lot of money. <laughs> so this was included, this pouch was included as a free gift and everything fits in here, which is also going to make packing so much easier and it's going to save me some space as well. Toiletries are all packed and listen, I don't play about taking care of my skin and still taking care of my body, like keeping my same skincare and like body care routine, even when I travel. I know some people kind of lax, but I'm going to be down there for a while. And as you all know, like I'm a very regimented, structured person. So keeping the same skincare products, making sure that I, you know, still keep up with my teeth care and everything is really my thing. So I know some people when they pack, They'll just do like, you know, the basics, like just toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash, that's fine. But no, like I need my floss, I need my tongue, <laughs> my tongue brush. Like I keep everything consistent and the same throughout. And it it looked like a lot, like as I was refilling everything, as I was going through the videos, I was like, man, it kind of looks like a lot, but it all fit in the pouch. So it must not be a lot. So right now I am going to get some back end administrative business stuff done. Um, I have one, two, three, three clients in my pipeline right now. They have all been notified that I am taking a trip. And so they know that their file is going to be completed or their resume is going to be completed once I return. Um, but I'm just sending out an email just as a touch base, as a reminder, just so that they know and giving them the revised due date that their resume and LinkedIn and cover letters will be completed. I have a new client who just reached out to me yesterday. She knows that I'll be out of town also. So I'm setting up our consultation for when I return and I'm also setting her due date as well. I have one, two, three, four YouTube videos that I need to edit and load into YouTube studio because I'll be gone for, yeah, I'll be gone for a minute. So I think it's four, four or five videos that I'll be like missing. So I'm going to load all five of them and get them scheduled. Um, along with some community posts that will be going out as well. I have a virtual assistant that I am bringing on board officially in January, but we're going to start her onboarding right after Thanksgiving. So I'm actually setting up all of our Zoom calls to walk her through the systems um, ahead of time so that that's one less thing that I have to do when I get back. And then I have a copywriter who is writing my YouTube descriptions for me. She's taking that off of my plate. Um, also so that I can rank higher when it comes to like SEO and the algorithm. I've been writing my descriptions myself for all this time. But um, SEO, I do it really well full time. Like I, I've written rep websites and all types of copy. But, you know, doing marketing full time and then having to do it for my business sometimes can be overwhelming. So I brought on this fantastic copywriter. She has written out all of the descriptions for all of the videos that I will be releasing while I'm away. So I also want to make sure I upload that in YouTube as well. So, yep, let's go ahead and handle some business.
All right, y'all, so now it is laundry day. <laughs> I was supposed to do laundry when I got back from Aruba, but I put it off. I had a lot of other things to focus on and I just did not feel like it. So my punishment for procrastinating <laughs> is me getting up at four o'clock in the morning to get my laundry done. Now, I don't do laundry very often. I do it once every three to four months with the exception of like my sheets and my comforter and stuff like that. So I had about five to six loads that I had to wash and it took me about, I wanna say a little over two and a half hours to get everything in the washing machine, in the dryer, dried, lug all of the bags back to my car and lug all of the bags from the car back up to my, <laughs> back up to my place because I stay on the top floor of my building. So I knew it had to get done because I had some items that were dirty that I wanted to pack for Jamaica, which was my motivation for getting myself up early at the butt crack of dawn to get this done. <laughs> If you are wondering how the heck <laughs> I am going to fit eight days worth of vacation clothes in my suitcase, I am going to show you. So I just have a regular schmegular carry-on. Um, big suitcases are such a pain in the you know what for me, especially because I'm so little. I hate lugging them around. I hate like grabbing them off of the conveyor belt when you go to baggage claim because they're so big. So I just have my carry-on. And a little hack that I use is really just rolling stuff up. As you can see, I'm rolling up my bathing suits, anything that is small, I'm going to roll up and tuck it somewhere. I also use every inch of space <laughs> that I have in my carry-on. So as you can see, I'm stuffing stuff on the sides and I'm stuffing stuff underneath stuff. And with my sundresses, I typically lay those flat because if I do roll them up, they're actually going to take up too much space. So with my sundresses, I ended up laying those flat and everything else for the most part gets rolled up. I also layer the stuff that I pack. So like all of my swimsuit cover-ups, as you can see, I'm layering them up. And then all of my shorts are going to be layered up on one line. And then all of my tops are going to be layered up in one line. And in between those items, depending on what the item is, like socks or a crop top or something like that, I just kind of tuck it in between those items as well. Now, I know that packing for the Caribbean is a little different because when you're going to some place that is hot, warm, you're just wearing dresses and sandals so it doesn't really take up a lot of space. Um, if I were packing for somewhere that wasn't as warm, like I packed for Toronto, I actually still use the same method, but instead I would have like maybe two pairs of pants and then I would just swap out the different tops that I wore. So I believe when I went to Toronto, 
I only had like two pairs of jeans that I brought that I wore the whole time I was there, but I had like eight or nine, <laughs> eight or nine, 10, 12 different tops. So the key to making everything fit in your carry on is really just rolling up everything and making sure everything lays as flat as possible. Like that is the key period that has been my travel hack that's how i'm able to pack all of my stuff in just one suitcase also do not underestimate little travel size bags or small bags and things like that essentially for the most part you're really just playing tetris like i had a strategy for the most part but as i'm going as you can see i'm kind of seeing where things can fit where things can go and with the space that's taken up how i can allot it differently and things like that this suitcase also expands a little bit so that helps a lot as well And another thing is that I put my clothes on one side of my carry-on and I put all of my shoes on the other side. And again, making sure that those shoes lay flat and they're not taking up any additional space.
Now, the little zipper thing that I had <laughs> actually broke, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take my scarf to cover everything up, tuck it in on the side to make sure nothing slips out and nothing falls out. Should my suitcase, for whatever reason, open unexpectedly, and when I get to where I'm going, like when I open it, I just don't want everything to bust out or bust wide open, <laughs> I guess, because this thing was packed, okay? You girl had everything in there. So I just put my, I like to put my scarf on the top and tuck it around the sides as a way to keep everything in there. Okay, so now it is time to get my little travel pouch together so this is i guess this essentially serves as my wallet typically when i'm traveling so as you can see i'm putting my money in here my credit cards my passport my airpods and my phones are going to go in here as well along with a pack of um, wet wipes and then some masks and some lens wipes for my glasses and this just makes it so whatever is the most important is just easily accessible so of course with my phone pulling up my boarding pass with my passport using that you know to get through the gates or whatever if they ask for it once I you know am checking into my flight when I'm checking my bag and all of that good stuff I'm somebody who hates digging for stuff I used to keep stuff in my pocket but that just became too confusing so I just I just got this little shoulder bag or like a fanny pack from Target it was I think $12 or something like that and it works wonders for me with traveling because it just keeps everything right at my fingertips around my waist around my shoulder I don't have to go digging through digging for anything through my book bag or anything like that so I always like to pack this the morning before my trip just to make sure I have everything These are the items that I'm going to put into my book bag. So I have some Oreo cookies, some grapes, some crackers, some almonds, a granola bar, an apple, <laughs> just early morning snacks just because I know that nothing is going to be open because my flight leaves so early. And I also have all of my camera stuff that's going to go in my book bag as well. So my camera that I'm going to use to vlog the trip as well as some extra batteries as well.